Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. Welcome to another video on Windows. We are talking about Windows Vista slash Longhorn again. Another feature for Vista that wouldn't make it. Sounds familiar? But that one was Morn. This one wasn't. Instead, it was literally cursed from the moment it was announced. And yet, a part of it made it in Vista, unlike WinFS. Join me as we discover what NGSCB was, why it was hated, and why it failed. NGSCB began its life even before it got the name Palladium or Palladium in 2002. No, it began in 1997 as a DRM project. DRM, Digital Rights Management. DRM is a copyright law concept. So, this is another episode of the Fair Use Saga. And thus, another Law Meets Balik Tanaw. Again, note the disclaimer above. You have been warned. Babala. ting ting DRM refers to a technological measure that effectively controls access to a work protected by copyright. The DMCA of the United States makes removing this measure a criminal act, meaning you go to jail, and gives the copyright owner the right to recover damages and to stop and destroy all copies of the copyrighted work, the DRM of which was removed. DRM protects copyright owners. What's wrong with it then? Richard M. Stallman, founder of the Free Software Foundation, called it Digital Restrictions Management. Restrictions, not rights. Professor Ross Anderson of the University of Cambridge mentioned in his book how DRM has reduced the rights of copyright users, those who buy and use software, music, ebooks, meaning all of us, not only in using these works, which they already paid for, which we already paid for, but also in their right to privacy, in our right to privacy. Ah, uh, the right to privacy, something I touched upon before, and I will do so again. Even Bill Gates had, ahem, choice words about DRM. We will go back to Stallman and Anderson in a while. Just an aside, maybe because of the controversy on DRM, the Philippine law is less strict than the U.S. version. Here, removing DRM does not lead to civil or criminal liability without an act of copyright infringement. Rather, removing DRM only determines the amount of damages and the length of imprisonment or jail time. Back to NGSCB, Bill Gates said, quote, It's a funny thing. We came at this thinking about music, but then we realized that email and documents were far more interesting domains. Interesting domains? Unquote. We know how NGSCB began, but what was it exactly? Initially called Palladium, or Palladium. The next generation secure computing base was a system of hardware and software that would, according to Microsoft, quote, protect software from software, unquote, viruses, for example. NGSCB would have created an isolated space, which Microsoft called the quote, trusted space, unquote, or quote, curtained memory, unquote, where only quote, Trusted applications, unquote, or, quote, trusted agents, unquote, could run. This space would have offered, one, quote, strong process isolation, unquote, to protect data in memory, two, quote, sealed storage, unquote, to protect data through encryption, three, quote, secure input and output, unquote, using protected keyboards, mice, and graphics adapters, 
and for quote attestation unquote to verify to users that they were dealing with an application and machine configuration that they trusted. Sounds fine and dandy, right? Ha 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 ha. NGSCB was hated from the very moment Microsoft announced it to the world. Even Stephen Levy, the Newsweek reporter who first wrote about it, was skeptical. But I'd like to focus on what Stallman and Anderson had to say. NGSCB or Palladium, or Palladium, was part of Microsoft's quote, trustworthy computing, unquote. Stallman called it, quote, treacherous computing. Unquote. His words, not mine. Why? Because according to him, quote, proprietary programs, programs distributed for profit, will use this device to control which other programs you can run, which documents or data you can access, and what programs you can pass them to. These programs will continually download new authorization rules through the internet and impose those rules automatically on your work. If you don't allow your computer to obtain the new rules periodically from the internet, some capabilities or capabilities will automatically cease to function. And, quote, About DRM, Stallman said, quote, Sharing will be entirely impossible, at least using the authorized files that you would get from those companies. You, the public, ought to have both the freedom and the ability to share these things. And, quote, Stallman even suggested that the system perpetuates corruption, aids in evading accountability, and kills free software. What about Anderson? He made a long list of frequently asked questions on NGSCB, which he equated with TC, trustworthy computing, or however Stallman called it. He said, quote, Disney, woohoo! Disney will be able to sell you DVDs that will decrypt and run on a TC platform, but which you won't be able to copy. The music industry will be able to sell you music downloads that you won't be able to swap. They will be able to sell you CDs that you'll only be able to play three times or only on your birthday. End quote. Anderson also said that TC would lock out unlicensed software, make people get less value from them, and reject data from applications with blacklisted serial numbers or if the user refused to pay the rental fee for the app. Meaning, Translation, or in layman's terms, the documents created with them or the music in them could no longer be open. Anderson also mentioned blocking whistleblowing, adversely affecting auctions, cheating in computer games, and even remote censorship and vendor lock-in, aka monopoly. I mentioned in passing Microsoft's history of being monopolistic in my WinFS video. That's not all. Like Stallman, Anderson cites as effects the death of free software, the evasion of accountability, and the continuation of wrongdoing. He also adds squeezing money to the last drop, what we now call microtransactions. Other critics of NGSCB repeat these same points. Why did NGSCB fail then? Because of the criticism? Unpopularity does not necessarily mean failure. Projects could still succeed, maybe through some damage control, maybe assure the critics that there won't be abuses, maybe build and rebuild trust. Microsoft tried that. It released a long white paper to explain how NGSCB promoted privacy. It said that NGSCB would not lead to a Microsoft monopoly. It said that NGSCB was not DRM. It said that NGSCB 
would not censor nor disable content without user permission. It said that NGSCB was an opt-in system. It would be off by default and could be turned off if already turned on. Yeah, about that last point. Anderson wrote that turning it off would lead to less choice. Ironically, when most people have it on, there's no point turning it off. So, Microsoft tried to address the fears that NGSCB would lead to Big Brother, Orwellian, 1984, the loss of control, the surrender of rights. And yet, NGSCB failed. Only one feature, secure startup, BitLocker, made it in Vista. It's still in Windows 10. And it locked out the superior of my sibling from her computer one time last year. That's not a bug. That's precisely how secure startup, BitLocker, works. My sibling superior had to ask again for authorization from her employer. Even if she bought that computer herself, it did not come from that employer. Why did NGSCB fail then? Remember when I said that WinFS was a failure of marketing? Maybe NGSCB was definitely a failure of marketing. Peter Biddle, who while in Microsoft began the groundwork for NGSCB or Palladium, or Palladium, wrote in 2008 that the negative perception against the company that, quote, it was evil, unquote, led to the death of Palladium, or Palladium. Meanwhile, Linux and other open-source software would adopt systems that worked similarly as NGSCB. What is the moral, or the lesson, not more a lesson that's redundant. What's the moral of the story? Simple. Goodwill matters. Integrity matters. Trust matters. Trust not just from our leaders, from our governments, from our friends, families, colleagues, and from ourselves, but also from businesses. And trust sells or kills. Please subscribe and ring the bell, and like and share this video across social media. Check out other Baliktanao slash In Hindsight videos. Support the show on PayPal, on Patreon, or on Brave Rewards. Thank you to my sibling G-G Arts for the microphone I used for this video and for my avatar. Check out her work on the links in the description. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and take care.